Welcome back one and all to Trails of Cold Steel. I am the Dark Seraph. Last time we have finished up the busy work in Ruer for the day and arrived in Elisa's house. Hello, Shannon. Would you like another cup of coffee, Master Machias? Oh, yes, please. And what about you, Master Reen? I'd be happy to take your cup directly to Lady Elisa's room if you'd like. Um, or you could just, you know, bring it out here. That'd be great. Your tease. I like that. This room is amazing. So many books here on such panoply and different subjects. Such a panoply of different subjects. It's as though you'd never need to visit the library. I guess it's safe to say it meets your approval. Yeah, you could say that. It's not every day I feel such a widely good. It, it feels good. Okay. Stumbling on my damn words. I need to get better on that. I really need to get better on that. Elliot and Crow. Back it up, neither of these. <laughs> we won't win anything, we won't be winning anything but a trip to the principal's office if we get banned for par from participating. First, you need to make them look a bit less revealing. Actually, make that a lot less revealing. Thank you, Reen. What's up these little comments in the margins? Optimal bounce vectors? Show dim titties? Are you serious? <laughs> bah. I knew you were overdue for a long talk about the prudish tendencies. Well, these issues aside, the base designs actually look pretty good. I'm leaning toward B. I think it looked good on everyone. You think so? Alright. I'll give this one a little more polish then. I want to slap you so hard right now. Light and rock first. So this is your room, huh? It's a lot bigger than I would have guessed. It's really nice and tidy too. I like the view from the window. Honestly, were you raised in a barn? You don't just roam around a girl's room checking everything out. Sorry. Though these days my mother is the only one who ever uses this floor. So there's so much space it almost feels pretty lonely. Having it all to myself. Lisa? Just a passing thought. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't ask you anything. That's pretty funny. Radio. Writing. It's a nice room. What do I do now? Shit. Just come right up here, I guess. Huh?
We're gonna learn a bit more about Shannon, aren't we? Who is this maid? We know her name is Shannon Kruger. Yeah, actually. That's not necessary. There's Elisa. What, are you going to a garden? Upstairs. A study, maybe? What is this? <laughs> hey, Elisa. Oh, it's you. Seems like a little garden. Sorry, were you worried? A little, yeah. Seeing you like that just kind of reminded me of that night in Nord. Oh, right. Oh, I'm so pathetic. No, you are not. I keep going on about how I'm going to be independent, but then I get all worked up over something as trivial as this. Seeing the city from above at night is really something, though. And to think, you got to take in a beautiful view like this every night growing up. Yeah, I guess so. It used to be my grandfather, my father, and my mother here. Then after my father died, Sharon joined us. But through the years, my family has always enjoyed seeing the lighted windows of Ruhr at night. Something that never changed, huh? I guess it is to you what Ymir's mountains are to me. <laughs> Maybe every family has something like that. Still, first my grandfather left. For the mountains of Nord. And now Sharon and I aren't here most of the time either. Mother just stays here all on her own. Every time I think of that, I just feel like crying. It breaks my heart. You do care about your mother then, I Good. can't understand why she chooses to be so alone. I thought so. You're not just angry at her, then. <laughs> well, she gets under my skin, that's nothing new. But if I was in her place, I don't know how I'd cope. I couldn't live like she does, losing herself in her work all alone with no friends or loved ones by her side. She wasn't like that before, back when my dad was still alive. And young Elisa is adorable. She's always been a career woman, but back then she was kind funny. She had this warmth, you know? But ever since Dad passed away, she hasn't been the same. Work became her life. She pushed Grandfather out as chairman, all for what? More work? I've never seen her indulge herself. Not even once. If she isn't dining with some business partner, she eats nutrition bars instead of meals. Sharon scolds her for it, but... That's how she is. And that's why I'm scared. I don't want life to just pass her by. That's really sweet, Elisa. Uh, where did that come from? You're always looking out for the people in your life. Even when they get on your nerves, you still care about them. It 
just like how you and I were at first, or how you were with Laura and Fee. Heck, I still remember how you told me off for hurting my sister's feelings. You've been keeping an eye out for Milliam all this time, too. And you should know that we're all really grateful to you for it. Especially me. You're a classy guy, Irene. <sighs> I'm worried about what's happening here in Ruhr, too. This is your home, and your mother might be caught up in whatever's going on. I think we should look into it. What do you say? What? But with all our field study tasks, where would we find the time? Why not do it while we're out handling those? Making some headway is always better than making none, right? I mean, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Everyone else does too. Fee cares. So does Elliot. Machias does too. Even Crow's been concerned about you. We can use our time in the city to poke around and find out more about what's going on. You know, kind of like we always do. Well... If you say so, but I'll save the thanks for later. Hmm. I doubt Sharon will tell us anything, no matter how much we pester her. But I'll ask around and see if anyone I know has any idea what might be going on. It shouldn't be too late to give some of them a call at least. All right, I'll leave the info gathering to you. Once we get our task list tomorrow, we can discuss how we want to do this. All right. Anyway, I think I'm going to start calling my contacts. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If I were you, I wouldn't go around stroking girls' heads like that. I mean, you don't just go whispering sweet nothings into any girl's ear, do you? This isn't so different, really. That wasn't a sweet nothing. Huh? Uh, oh, I guess you're right. Sorry, it's something I always did to my sister when she was feeling down. But now that you mention it, she did seem to resent it more as she got older. But when I stopped doing it, she called me insensitive and got all upset anyway. I think your sister and I would have a lot to talk about. But anyway, I'll see you later. All right. Rain just cannot win, can he? She seems like she's feeling better now. I just hope our efforts will turn up some good leads. The Arcus. Huh? Call functionality works here? I guess it would, seeing as we're right in the headquarters of the company that built these. Maybe it's the instructor. Hello. Reen Schwartz are speaking. Oh, good, it went through. Glad I was able to get your number from Milliam. Claire? Is this... Captain Claire? It is. I apologize for calling so late. Are you free right now? Yeah. What's up? There's something important I'd like to discuss with you. But it's a matter best discussed in person. Would it be possible for you to meet me in the city? Sooner is preferable. Like, right now? Um, would this happen to be related to our field study? Technically speaking, yes. But with the provincial army on alert, traveling in a large group would draw too much suspicion. That's why I decided to contact you directly. You're the team leader. People keep saying that, but I never recall agreeing to it. <laughs> but, sure, I guess. I'll head out right now. Where should I meet you? Go to the upper level. On the south side of the elevated walkway, you'll see a bar called F. F? It's a quiet, upscale establishment. The perfect place for a private discussion. 
And probably some good whiskey. A bar called F on the south side of the upper level. Got it. I'll head there right away. I I'll recall. be waiting. I'm not on a schedule or anything, though, so there's no need to rush. You've got time. And by the way, I'd rather you didn't mention any of this to Elisa. Huh? Why? Because what I want to discuss with you happens to involve the Reinford Company. But I'll leave it to your discretion. Anyway, you know where to find me. Awkward! It feels a bit cruel to keep only Elisa out of the loop. But it sounds like it's pretty important. I think it'd be better to go now and tell everyone else about it later. Okay. A bar on the south side of the upper level. Oh my god. Huh. I need to leave, but I don't want to leave the front door unlocked. But if I ask someone to lock up behind me, they'll want to know where I'm going. I guess I might have to tell Elisa where I'm going after all. Will you be stepping out? Or Shannon. Uh, Sh Sharon? I couldn't even tell she was there. I keep calling her Shannon. Her name is Sharon. <laughs> There's no need to explain. That glimmer in your eyes tells me all I need to know. Not to worry, Masterine. Your secret's safe with me. So enjoy your night to the fullest. Wait, what? You have a date with a fetching young lady, don't you? No. I'll make sure no one notices your absence, especially my lady. Just be certain you're back by morning. I assure you, I'm not that lucky. I just got word that this acquaintance of mine was visiting Ruhr. And they wanted to catch up a bit, so I was going to slip out and see them for a little while. <laughs> Very well then, I'll lock up behind you. I'd also be glad to help you build an ironclad alibi. No one would think twice, even if you were to stay out all night. I appreciate the thought, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Anyway, I'll be back later. Of course. Take care. but I still see quite a few people working. Night shift, where's it at? I guess it comes with the territory, working for the world's largest industrial manufacturer. Hmm. What was that? Doesn't look like it was much of anything. You're being paranoid, Schwarzer. Right. She said she'd be waiting at a bar called F. It's supposed to be somewhere on the southern side of the upper level. Should I head straight there? Where are you going? Fee? Fee? How long have you been there? Wait. Have you been trailing me ever since I left the penthouse? Well, I saw you slip out. So, where are you going? Are you really headed out for a late night romantic rendezvous? The term would be thirst, but no. What kinds of lies has Sharon been feeding you anyway? Okay, here's what's up. Claire called me and I need to speak with her. That totally sounds like a rendezvous. It is a rendezvous, but it's not Sorry. romantic. I shouldn't have interfered. Whoa, whoa, it's not like that. <sighs> well, you know everything I know about it now. 
Why don't you come too? You sure? No reason not to. It sounded like whatever info she's got has something to do with our field study. And honestly, I wasn't all that keen on having a one-on-one -on -one with a military officer to begin with. Gotcha. But first, I want to walk around a bit. After we've been walking around all day? Whenever I come to a new city, I always like to get a feel for what it's like during the day and the night. I feel kind of uneasy if I don't. Oh, right. It must be a Jaeger thing. All right. I'll join you for a little stroll. I don't want to keep the captain waiting too long, though. Will once around town be enough? That'll be fine. Okay, let's roll. By the way, did you happen to run into Sharon on your way out? She saw me leaving, but she just let me go. Hmm. Even the best maids aren't that all-knowing. There's a diner here. This was some kind of classy bar, I think? Seems pretty lively in there. This is where Claire said to meet her, right? Yeah, this looks like the place. Okay. Captain Claire. Oh, wow. There she is. Looking very well dressed, to say the least. It's weird to see her out of a uniform. Uh, I guess it makes sense that she wouldn't come here in uniform. The charms of an older woman, eh? I think I'll manage. Sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh. Hi. Yeah, I kind of ran into her on the way here and told her she could come along. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. I assume you've been surveying the town while acting as Rain's bodyguard? Sounds like you've done your homework. The intelligence division has told me a little. Anyway, I think we might attract a little too much attention if we stay at the counter. What do you say we get a table for three? Acting as a guard? Interesting. It's good to see you both. I think this may be the first time we've been able to have a proper conversation. You may be right. The other time you've been on assignment. I was hoping I'd get the chance to sit down and talk with you too, actually. Oh? You sure you don't want me to go? That's not what I mean. I have a lot of questions, like about why Milliam transferred into our class, for example. But there's one really fundamental question that would go a long way toward answering a lot of the others. What exactly is it that you and Chancellor Osborne are trying to accomplish? Let's look at that standoff with the Provincial Army earlier this evening. It's hard for me to feel much sympathy for them after they drove armored cars right into the middle of the city. But maintaining order in the provinces is generally accepted to be the duty of the Provincial Armies. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed an awful lot like you were just trying to provoke them by belittling their authority. It did look like your people were picking a fight. They were, definitely. Viewed without the proper context, I can see how it might look like that. 
But Context right now, the factional king. conflict in the Empire is nearly at its breaking point. I've noticed. Crossbell is buzzing with talk of independence, and Calvert is still weathering its immigration disputes. In such volatile times, there's a very real need to create a far more expansive network to help maintain public order. The only organizations that are up cost. to the challenge are the Railway Military Police and the Intelligence Division. Okay, but at what cost? That may be the case. Seriously, it bears worth stating a third time. At what cost? Still, your boss is the one making those conflicts worse. I can't deny that. But at the very least, the Chancellor is acting with a sense of integrity. He hasn't stooped so low as to give aid to terrorists unlike some others I could name. I want you to at least understand that. At least one of them is dead. Wait, so... Wow. She really said it. So the noble faction's been the one backing the terrorists, huh? Huh. I'm afraid there's no longer any doubting it. We've all but confirmed the involvement of Duke Cayenne, the most prominent representative of the four great houses. The three airships the Imperial Liberation Front have been using have been traced back to Ordis as well. I'd wondered how they got their hands on those. I've heard the Duke is just a gaudy old man, but... Eustace's brother came to pick him up in Legram, didn't he? That's what Toval told us. And now, Rufus just so happens to pop up on another of his secret trips. Captain Clare, what's going on in Ruhr? And how are Elisa's family and the Reinford Company involved? I guess it's time to get to the matter I called you here for in the first place. The Railway Military Police is currently weighing the possibility of a forced inspection of Reinford's first factory. Sounds serious. The first factory belongs to one of Reinford's major divisions, right? Correct. It's one of the main divisions and handles the bulk of the company's iron and steel processing, among other things. They're also currently under suspicion of something I'm not at liberty to discuss with you right now. I'm guessing it involves the Imperial Liberation Front. The two of you are aware that project management at Reinford is split up across several major branches, right? It is? And on top of that, she's got her hands on the development of our Arcus units, too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. But suffice to say, the Chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Reinford Group. Well, lately, the Directors have... Come to think of it, I overheard Elisa and Sharon talking about something like that. For years now, Reinford has been the Empire's heavyweight when it comes to heavy industry and manufacturing. The company is split into different divisions that handle things like steel production, railways, weaponry, and tools. The problem is that those divisions have simply become too large. Large enough to have their own internal allegiances, some to the nobles, with others supporting the reformist faction. Uh, are you serious? So even companies are taking sides. That doesn't surprise me. I'm sure Arena Reinford is aware of this to at least some extent as the company's chairman. But the self-supporting accounting system she introduced has the side effect of granting each division a long leash. Because of that, I doubt even she has a full grasp of the situation. So, the first factory you guys have your sights set on for that inspection is aligned with the noble faction, I assume. You assume correctly. And the Provincial Army is doing everything it can to stop us from carrying out that investigation. That's what led to this evening's quarrel. I imagine Chairman Arena is currently doing her utmost to rein in all the divisions and get them back in line. The thing is, when she seized control of the company five years ago, she had to rely on support from both sides. Being indebted to them like that, I have my doubts she'll be able to target the underlying problem. It's sounding shadier by the minute. You can say that again. The situation seems even more dire than I thought. And while all this is going on, the factional conflict keeps burning hot across the rest of the Empire. I've told you as much as I can right now. Tensions are mounting all over the country, 
but Ruhr has an extra fuse of its own. Try to gain an understanding of the crisis unfolding here, then do your best to stay out of it. Whatever other lessons Class 7 takes away from this field study, I hope that ends up on the list. Holy shit. <laughs> I wish you the best with the remainder of your field study. Please have the bill sent to the Railway Military Police Branch Office in Ruhr Station. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Wait! The bill! Looks like she just picked up our tab. She gave us some good intel, too. For free, even. <sighs> I can't just go running after her now. Looks like we owe her one. So, you like the mature type, huh? <laughs> She's sort of like Sarah. Except responsible and composed. You can say that again. Oh. Must be yours. Hello? Reen Schwarzer speak. Reen? What are you doing? Oh, it's just you, Elisa. What do you mean, it's just you? Is it true some girl invited you out for a night on the town? Oh my god, god damn it, Sharon! Whoa, hold on. A late night date? I thought you only had eyes for me, Reen. <laughs> okay, crow. <laughs> anyway, good job, kiddo. You better spill all the details later, huh? He'll do no such thing! Now, now, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Fee was with him too. Still, it was rash of you to go out on your own without at least consulting us. Ready to head back? Yeah, I think that'd be for the best. Keep up the good work! Oh my god, give me a minute. Okay! Sorry for that cut. The time has come. It's probably voice acted. First time. Yes, it is. I am very sorry. Need to check on my dogs. <laughs> As you wish. We'll hit them so hard they'll be picking up the pieces for weeks. You heard the boss, man. Tomorrow's a red letter day for us. A real do-or-die moment, in every sense of the word. All our preparations will be rewarded soon, when we sweep in and take the Chancellor's head. Keep your eyes on the prize, and give it all you've got! Yeah! They're not pulling any punches, are they? Jesus. I'm tired. <sighs> I know, Crow. So tired. I know it. The air here is so fresh, especially for a city with this many factories. It must be because we're up in the mountains. I'll say, compared to the capital, the air quality is pristine. <laughs> well, the capital does have a few hundred thousand more people living there. You jealous? Uh, sure is a nice day today, isn't it, Elisa? Hm, not as nice as last night must have been. Oh, Lord. I told you, I I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Oh, my I God. I cannot believe you. After all those things you said to me last night, you go rushing out to meet another girl. 
Ooh, the skies might be clear, but I'm sensing a stormy forecast today. Rain, just tell her it was Captain Claire, and it was official business. Well, all things considered, even if we assume Captain Claire is trustworthy, I'm not sure how wise it was to go out on your own. Oh, they know it's Claire. I know, I know. In hindsight, I regret keeping it to myself. Still, it was pretty bold of Captain Claire to show up alone to meet Reen. Even dressed down, I wouldn't have thought she'd go out alone with the Provincial Army on patrol. Oh my god! I'm guessing she's more than strong enough to handle this. Another minute! Oh, Sophie, what is your problem? Get out! Again, sorry for cuts. Not sure what her weapon of choice is, though. Oh, wish I could have seen her all dolled up, though. But she was a real knockout. Crow, you're not Come helping. on. That would put a spring in any man's step. I don't blame you for sneaking out alone. Oh! Take it out on him, Elisa! Uh, no! It's not like I knew she was going to show up wearing a cocktail dress. I swear! You seemed pretty taken by her when she showed up yesterday, though. And your eyes were glued to her right up until she left the scene. You are not helping. Oh, really? So while we were enjoying a quiet evening, you were out carousing with a beautiful woman, were you? Oh my god. Lucky son of I mean for shame, Green. We're here representing the Academy on a field study. <laughs> even Machius won't. Even Machius is with Crow. I swear, you guys are just making things up at this point. But thanks to the information I got from her, we have a pretty good idea what's going on here in Ruhr. And now that we know, we should be able to do something about it. What do you think, Elisa? Yeah, I'm in. So in short, the first factory did something to catch the eye of the railway military police, prompting an inspection. And all the while, the provincial army has been here blatantly trying to prevent them from doing that? Let's not forget that the first factory is run by none other than the Noble Faction. I know that the divisional directors have been operating without much in the way of executive oversight for years now. But Mother always allowed it. She thought that encouraging competition among the divisions would yield more innovations. I never thought that'd lead to something like this. Seems like the lesser of two evils. By the way, hearing about the first factory made me curious. Do the other divisions have their own political allegiances? Probably. Well, to give you a basic idea... This is a bit oversimplified, of course. Divisions are made up of many people, and they all have their own opinions. But the positions of each division's directors are clear as day, though. The first and second factories in particular have had a pretty fierce rivalry going on between them for years. But even still, I wouldn't have expected the first factory to do something flagrant enough to prompt a military inspection. Neither would I. All right, we're gonna do whatever it takes to get to the bottom of this. And when we tie this up all nice and neat for her, even my mother will have to admit she's grateful to him. Sounds like a plan. Oh my god, I didn't mean to do that. I'm tired. That's the spirit. Offhand, I'd say this falls under the scope of our field study too. Thanks, I everyone. I took my dog for a walk tonight. Sounds like we're in for a ride. <laughs> anyway. Let's take a look at the field study tasks Sharon gave us for today. Nordia Highway Monster required. Shots fired. And crying over lost spilt milk is optional. Yeah, I think we can handle these. It's still 8 a.m., so we have plenty of time to work our way through the list. And while we're doing that, we can ask the people we meet about how things stand between Reinfurt's divisions. Look alive, everyone. It's time to get to work. Right. Roger. Gotcha. Gonna end this one here. Thank you all for watching. Join me next time on Trails of Cold Steel as I... Unveil even more political corruption. But until then, I am the Dark Seraph, signing off. And once again, I am sorry for all the cuts.